In this example, we're going to see how to find a confidence interval for the difference of two population means. The specific example we're working with says you're a college student and you have a friend at a rival university. The two of you compete in almost everything. One day your friend boasted that students at her university are taller than the students at yours. You each gather a random sample of heights of people from your respective campuses. Your data are displayed below, units are inches. So we want to create a confidence interval for the difference in the mean heights between these two populations. And that is our parameter of interest. Difference in the mean heights of each university. Now working with two populations and even with the mean, there's a couple of different ways to do this. And uh, so we have some assumptions specific to what we're going to be using for formulas in this. Uh, first assumption, simple random sampling. That's stated here. It says you gather random samples. Um, we know from the central limit theorem with a single population, we either needed the population to be normally distributed or the sample size to be 30 or more. Um, you get a similar rule here where you need each of the samples to be 30 or more. Um, since we don't have that, uh, these samples are 17 and 20 respectively, um, we need the population to be normally, populations, both populations to be normally distributed. And they can vary a little bit from being perfectly normal, but they should be approximately normal. Uh, we need independent sampling for what we're doing here. And that's the same as with independent probability. Um, the sampling from one population doesn't affect the sampling from the other. So um, there are different universities that that should be easy assumption to follow. And last but not least is that the uh, population variances or standard deviations are unequal. Uh, it actually, would what we're going to do would work if they are equal, um, but there's a separate technique for that that's sometimes used. So this is specifically the technique for when it's not equal, and that's going to be how it is most of the time. You know, in the same way, most of the time you don't know the population standard deviation. Um, when you have two population standard deviations, you usually don't know if they're equal or not. So. All right, so we want to copy and paste these into our Excel spreadsheet. And it's a little tricky here. I start my cursor up there and end it right here. And I found that it will copy and paste in quite nicely. All right, and now I take a closer look at this. Um, for each of the two samples, we have the mean, standard deviation, and sample size being calculated by Excel. All right, so same down here. Mean, standard deviation, sample size. It's easy to get the point estimate from so just subtracting those two means. And the degrees of freedom is actually a pretty crazy formula. You can see it here in this box. Um, and there it is written out in Excel. It does a weird weighted average of the standard deviations and sample sizes from both samples. Confidence level for this problem is 80%. We're using the t distribution, so you can use that confidence level to find the level of significance, and you can use the degrees of freedom given and get the t value. The standard deviation for the sampling distribution is given by this formula, and you can see that it's similar to the Pythagorean theorem. It's again a sort of weighted average of those two sample standard deviations. And then, of course, the margin of error just multiplies those two. And the confidence interval 
uh, lower bound is subtracting the margin error from the point estimate, and upper bound is adding the margin error to the point estimate. All right. So degrees of freedom is 34.2944. Margin of error is 1.4206 oh, and the confidence interval goes from 0 0.67916 to 3.52025 uh, so we are 80% confident that the difference in means is between 0 0.68 and 3.52 inches. Um, you want to think about how we were subtracting. We were subtracting the average from your school from the average from your friend's school, uh, which means that if that difference is positive, then your friend's data has taller people than your data, right? And that's what we have. It's positive. In fact, the whole confidence interval is positive. Since the entire confidence interval is positive values, um, we are 80% confident that the mean height at our friend's university is higher. If, however, that confidence interval included both negative and positive values, we would be inconclusive. And if the confidence interval was all negative values, then we would be confident that the mean height at our university was higher, right? The negative values would imply that we had taller people at our university. So you got to think about uh, what values are in that confidence interval and whether the positive or negative values, what they can be interpreted as. So you know, the way we subtracted here, Positive values for this difference mean that the friend has taller students at their school. Negative values mean we have taller students at our school. And, and if the confidence interval is just in the positive or just in the negative, then you can use the confidence interval as evidence that the population means have that property. If not, if it straddles zero, then it's, it's inconclusive. Okay, so we just hit submit to turn in.